Welcome to Homemade Hilton. Our new series, Creating the Outdoor Oasis, will give you tips on how to expand living outdoors. Summertime is almost here, and most of you will be spending time outdoors. But when I stepped out, the backyard was a laughing stock. So let's get to work, and we're going to give you some tips on how to transform your space. We first started with clearing the space. We started with this tree here first, but make sure to get a professional. And Brian here will let you know what to do with the leftover wood. All right, uh, it's Brian with Brian's Land and Tree, locally owned, licensed staying ashore. Uh, customers, uh, they wanted to keep the firewood. Uh, it's a great way to find some use out of something and, and also save a little bit of money if you hire a company and want to keep the wood, they'll usually cut you a little bit of a discount. Um, if you do keep firewood though you want to keep it off the ground because what it'll do is it's going to absorb that moisture off of the ground and then it's going to get spongy and then spongy wood is no good wood so put you some boards down you can go get some pallets in a local shop and uh make sure you don't put the wood on uh on on the ground directly on the ground sunlight um, and also you want it to where air can get to it. That's why we put it against chain link fence. It can catch the air from both ways. And uh, yeah, cover it if it's not split. You do want to cut, keep it covered though once you split it. Otherwise it's going to get wet. Um, you do want it to have it sunlight. A lot of people put it behind sheds and barns. You don't want to do that. For one, it's only getting one direction of air. And typically if it's against a shed or a barn, it's getting a lot of shade, so it's not going to dry, um, and it's going to absorb the moisture. Not only that, it can attract termites or bugs, and you don't want that near your house. So, somewhere a chain link fence in the middle of the yard where it can get a lot of the directions of, of air is, is always ideal. And make sure to remove the stump and its roots, or you will have reoccurring growth. A grinder was used to take out the stump and some of the main roots. the tree allowed for more sunlight to hit the backyard. This is going to help for grass in the future. Removing the tree gave a more open feel in the backyard and made it look slightly bigger. Here are some before and after pics. When we first bought the home, the flower beds around the home were neglected. <laughs> So let's tackle these beds. I have some really cool ideas and these are some cheap and easy updates that you can do to your flower beds. First things first, we have to remove all of these hideous weeds throughout the flower beds. This will make it easier for us to dig up the area. Submit and close the whole bedding area. So we used a small sledgehammer to pick up all the cement pieces. The investment of a jackhammer makes this project a breeze. Also, I don't know what it is with women and power tools, but of course I had to get in on the action. We decided to use wood to make the new flower beds. To reinforce the flower beds, we inserted stakes in the grounds along with a cement mix for extra stability. Next, we aligned the boards up with the stakes and used nails to attach the boards to the stakes. Come <laughs> on. 
And while the beds were getting assembled, I decided to create a dry creek lake bed. It's pretty simple. I have the pictures to show you a quick step-by-step -step on how I put it together. I dug a small trench extending out from the gutter system so that water could have a way to come out. This is a beautiful way to move the water away from the house nicely. The beds are coming together very nicely, but there is still a lot more work to do. So stay tuned and we'll show you the finished product along with other quick ideas to dress up the space and make it your oasis. Stay tuned.